right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Happy 2021, first stream of 2021. Been pretty busy, of course, as you can imagine, the last couple of days celebrating. Um, I'm sober, so everything is fine. Um, yeah, so uh, just to kind of open up 2021, I wanted to do a bunch of things that I haven't done yet in Elite Dangerous, which is in VR going to a bunch of like uh, stellar phenomenon and, and planets that are really cool that people have identified and like a black hole as well because I haven't been to one of those and maybe a pulsar uh, and just see those things and witness them and, and, and I haven't done that, right? So it's going to be a first for me to do all of that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go to any Thargoid locations today, uh, but we might stop by the Colsac Nebula, depending on uh, how many jumps that's going to take or, or how long that might be. So, and, and if so, that could actually, we, we might just go visit some of the Thargoid stuff at the same time, or maybe we'll get interdicted. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's a little bit far out, so that'll be maybe one of the last things we do. Uh, I haven't totally plotted the course, but I, I've kind of put together a sort of flight plan for myself to kind of do that, uh, at least to start out with. So let me switch. I'm looking up into the sky here because I have all of my visual stuff and my monitors up there, uh, including chat, so I can see that. And if I switch over to VR setup, uh, I hope everything just works because... Um, here we go. So you now you can see I'm looking up into the sky. Um, I, I haven't... I don't know. There's been some weird issues with Twitch the last, like, hour or two. Um, so hopefully everything just works and there isn't any issues. I also want to make sure that the stream itself is pretty decent quality, which it looks like everything is fine. Uh, and hopefully it stays that way. Um, I guess... I guess we'll just find out, right? I don't know. There's some other issues, too, that I've noticed. Again, everything is with VR, and it's such a nightmare, uh, where the sound in-game might be a little bit too low. And I don't know if that's a big deal or not. So, I don't know. Uh, but I do have a kind of flight plan, so let me open that up on this screen here. All right, there we go. Great. And I'm also going to turn this off, so that that doesn't take up as much processing power. Okay, good. I think everything is looking fine. So I have a flight plan. We gotta start out in Seoul, uh, so we'll start moving there now. Uh, I am flying in the, um, in this. Oh, that's not a very good thing. I'm flying in my, uh, my Beluga liner, which uh, I've kind of outfitted to, to uh, have an extremely high uh, range for the FSD or for the, um, what's going on here with my controller? What is this? Okay, there we go. To have a really long range with the FSD, or the uh, essentially the way to get from system to system. Uh, it has a range of okay, about 50 light years. Actually, I do have a, a ship that's a little bit faster than that. Um, let me take a look at that really quickly because I might just use that instead. So my ASP is honestly larger than that. It's a higher one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that goes up to 60. 55 to 60. Uh, the difference, however, is... I don't have fighters in there, which I don't need. And I do have a planetary vehicle hanger, which we may or may not need. So, um... Yeah, maybe, maybe I should take the Explorer instead. Let's do this. Instead of the Beluga Liner. Because this, this ship is nice, but I think the Asp might be a little bit better here, since it can go... Uh, a little bit of a higher range than the Beluga. So we'll switch over to that. There we go. Cool. Decent. I think everything works just fine. No problems. So far, at least. So far, so good. I think sound is good. Yeah, sound is fine. Hopefully it's not too loud in certain places, but I guess we'll see. Oh, that's the one thing, is I don't have an auto-dock uh, on this. Um, is it worth me outfitting one? What would I have to get rid of? What would I have to get rid of? Cargo space? I don't actually need cargo space. I don't think. Detailed surface scanner. I do want that just in case I come across something new. Um... Yeah, maybe I don't need a cargo rack. Right? Let me think. If I go to Thargoid space, I could collect some stuff. But I don't really care about that. So, um... 
Yeah, let's let's go ahead and change that out. I'll probably regret it later, but that's okay. I'm not doing anything that requires any cargo. So we're going to go and switch this over to an advanced docking computer. Just so, you know, part of these are a little bit easier. That's all. You may or may not dock in certain places. All right. And I guess we're good to go. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we are good to go. We'll launch, and we'll head over to Seoul. Oh, Cody's having a good time. Uh, Alright, we're gonna go to Seoul. We'll start there. We'll start by going to Earth and Mars, which I have seen, but I didn't really take a look at too much. Uh, I kind of want to at least fly around there for a little bit. So we'll start our journey there. That's only three jumps. So very, very simple. Explorer ships are extremely good at uh, making these kind of journeys. Okay, right, sound I think can be a little bit lower, right? Alright, we'll try that and see if that's any better. So let me take a look while we're doing this. Uh, on the list of places we're going is... We're going to visit some generation ships. Uh, and I'll tell like stories about those, at least from what I know. We'll go to one crash site uh, and check that out. Uh, we'll go to like... We'll, we'll see some locations if they're uh, near enough, like Betelgeuse, which is a massive star. Um, there's an asteroid base I might want to visit as well. There's some stellar features, planetary features, black hole, nebula, maybe Thargoids, and a pulsar. That's all kind of on the list of things that I want to go and check out. So, from here, we're going to move to the next system, and I'm going to switch over to analysis mode and just uh, honk in every system to at least get some discovery data. I don't think that worked, actually. Alright, good. Uh, the other thing that I need to know is... Oh, uh, shoot. Hold on. Where do I have all that stuff? I think it's on another monitor. Hold on, I think RTX voice. I need to take a look at this. I'm gonna have this up as well. Yeah, everything's disabled. Okay, good. I haven't really been able to figure out exactly why RTX voice is like having robotic voices occasionally. I guess it's just a work in progress. Although it would be nice then I have to hear my typing. Alright, so. too close. Oh, that really sucks, actually. Alright, I have to wait for the cooldown on that. Waiting on the cooldown of the FSD, we'll start our journey at Earth. Earth and Mars, and maybe whatever else we want to take a look at in the Seoul sector. Um, I also kind of want to dock at, like, a couple of the stations, I think, because they look pretty cool. Uh, like the station around Earth. We'll see. I think they're slightly unique in terms of how they look and such. So we'll check those out. Alright, I hope we don't overheat here. Actually, it doesn't matter. If we're going to dock at a station in the solar system anyways, then I guess we're good. It shouldn't matter. We'll get repairs and everything there.
Notable presidents. The first thing that appears on radar. All right. Cool. We'll get some fuel, even though we don't need it. So we're probably going to dock around here. And we are going to go first to... Oh, you can, you can actually go to Mercury and land there. Okay. Uh, Venus, Earth. So first we'll go to Earth. Man, look at all this. Abraham Lincoln. I want to dock there. There's Galileo, which is around the moon. Actually, no, I want to dock at Galileo. Uh, okay, we'll let it do the auto super cruise thing. So we'll go to Earth. We'll check out the moon. We'll go to Galileo. We'll go to Mars. And then we'll start the rest of the journey from there. I think that's how it'll play out. What is that? Unregistered comms beacon. What is that? Like, there's so many things in the system. Um, ooh, you can land on Jupiter? No, you can land on Callisto and Europa. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually, if you can land on Europa. Uh, Ganymede. Saturn. You can land on a lot of the things here. Okay. Titan. Uranus. Neptune. I don't even have Pluto here, I don't think. What is all this? Oh, there's a Pluto. There you go. Okay. Pirate activity detected. Threat 6. Wow. Okay. Threat 7 for pirate activity. Wow. That's, um... Interesting. Okay, I think we're here. Okay, now how do I turn that off? How do I... How do I turn off the scan... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. There's Earth. Yay. All right, so... Uh, yeah, that, that looks that looks like Earth. Doesn't look like very much has changed in a thousand years. A thousand three hundred years. We'll kind of circle the globe here a little bit. Because I want to see it from both sides, uh, including like the night side, right? It's very cool, though. There's Africa... Europe's up there. The screen is getting in the way. Oh, I want to see if California's broken off. I, actually, that's probably on the night side right now. Uh, what speed am I going? 300 kilometers per hour. We can kind of move away here. Everything here is night. Well, it's going to be much harder to actually see what's what then. Uh, I think that is South America, then up here is North America. Because that looks like uh, Central America to me. But I can be wrong. Right? Slightly? Actually, I have no idea. It's really, really hard to tell just based on the lights. Um, yeah, I'm just basing everything off lights. Really, really hard to tell. I think that's about right. I think this is North America. But it's nighttime, so, you know, besides all the lights, you can't really see very much. Cool. Again, I always like artist representations of what people think the future will look like and everything. And even if it's just a planet, we can't even go down to the surface. Uh, it is still really, really cool to see. And okay, we're going to go back over to the sunny side. I wonder... So the, all the rotations and everything should be completely correct. Um, and even, like, the positioning of the planets should be, like, correct in terms of, like, it'll take a year to go around the sun. Um, I 
What is this? Asia? It's really hard to tell where I am right now. Try to move away a little bit as all these textures load in. Okay, that's fine. All right, pretty cool. I think we can move on to the next place. We're going to go over to the moon now. Uh, that is... Oh, I have to scroll back up here. Wait, hold on. That activity is 200,000 out? Whoa. Oh, because Persephone is 448. Wow. 484,000 light seconds out. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we want to go to the moon. Okay. Oops. Can we land on the moon? No, of course not. Because technically, I, I'm sure that we've inhabited the moon by now, right? Alright, so. Planet's back behind us. In fact, uh, I could always take like a screenshot here and take a look. There it is. And we are going to there. From there to there. That's so cool. Alright, here we are. Pretty close by. What is this? Okay, that's Galileo. That's where we have to go next. Uh, which we will. We're going to deactivate Super Cruise Assistant here, and we're just going to take a look at the moon. Uh, I, I kind of wonder if you can actually see, like, the moon landing sites and everything here. Um, I really doubt it. I don't know. Like, it kind of depends on what texture they used for the moon, right? They tend to pay attention to details. So, given... Let's see, how would we know? I think with a telescope from Earth, you're even able to see kind of like, like the tracks of the, of like, um, you know, the Apollo program when they took, um, wait, this looks weird too. Look at this. All the lines are odd. Yeah, I'm not really sure how accurate the moon's texture is. Oh, I want to see Earth from here. So we're going to go and turn around. Uh, this is the moon. So Earth should be... Uh, where, where is Earth from here? Oh, there it is. It's Earth. Cool. So you can see Earth. Ancient history is one of the like sightseeing locations over there. So Earth is right over there from the moon. Okay, cool. And now we're going to go to Galileo, where we can probably see both at the same time. Uh, and that is over here. Galileo. All right. We're in solo mode, so nobody's going to be bothering us, just NPCs. Of course, I'm just sightseeing anyways, so I'm not really trying to get into kind of any PvP in an ASP explorer. Where's Earth from here? All right. So I'm guessing... All right, so Galileo actually looks pretty normal to me. Looks like any regular station. We'll dock inside just to make sure. Um, from here... Before we dock, there's the moon. And there's Earth. So here, here we go. Earth and the moon, all in one spot. That's actually really, really cool. I like this stuff. All right, let's go dock in the station. So this looks like a Federation station, which makes sense. The Federation owns Seoul. Uh, that being one of the factions in the game. We're going to go ahead and dock ourselves. Alright, 
Where are we? Where's 20? That's 23. Where is it? Oh, I can't tell. Slow down for auto dock. I did. Wait, what? Oh. There we go. You know, this station does look mostly normal, though. I think everything generally looks about... Any... It's, it's, it's a little bit different from other stations, but... Um, it's modular, right? So they just put kind of different textures or things in the station altogether. Alright, but we can get repairs here and then go to Mars. Let's go over to Mars. I'm surprised these ships are not allies to me. What's my status with them? I'm, oh, I'm friendly, okay. I'm only 82% because the reputation goes down to, I think, a minimum of 75%. Because um, I haven't really been doing missions for the Federation lately. Alright, let's see how Mars was terraformed over a thousand plus years. Earth-like world. They consider Mars an Earth-like world. That's how far the terraforming has come. Alright, let me go into auto for that. Wait, hold on. Did I not set that? Second terraforming attempt. So these are all things in space that you can go and visit. And uh, they just give you a little, you know, bit of background and story for everything. Uh, what I want to do is close that. Uh, actually, I need to I need to readjust my position here. So hold on, I could do that with Oculus. Make sure that everything looks good. Reset view. Okay, there we go. Much better. And also, maybe it's better in VR to just have no, like, fancy lights. Um, I don't know, I like this one better, honestly. The blue lighting is a little bit nicer for me. What's cool about the Asp is that the second seat is actually below me. So, uh, if I take a look at it here... You can have a second person in the ship. Uh, but instead of them being, like, behind you or something, it's below. Which I think is really cool. I think it's one of the only ships I've noticed that is like that. Very cool. What's that noise? It's like the monitor's making noise over here. Alright. Hey, Mars. It's actually really blue. I think I've passed this once before, and I didn't really get a good look at it. Hey! <laughs> That's really loud, actually. Thanks, Jax. Uh, I'll make sure that Cody gets a lot of love. He's in the other room right now. We're uh, having some water issues with, um, with this room, so I don't want to have Cody in here very much uh, until, like, the roof is fixed and such. Um, I'm glad that noise and everything worked, although that might have been a little bit too loud, huh? If that was, let me know, because I gotta I gotta tune those around and, and make sure that everything looks uh, and sounds good with those new channel point features. 
It's fine on stream. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, so I've added a few things to everything. To, like, pretty much everything. But look at this. This is Mars. It's, like, completely unrecognizable. Well, obviously, you know, it's a artist rendition of what uh, Mars can look like in a thousand years, right? A thousand three hundred years. After being terraformed. With oceans and... Uh, I mean, I guess civilization. I don't really see any obvious civilization. Let me go to the dark side and see what's there. Look at this. This is a massive ocean on Mars. I love it. It's so cool. With what looks to be a hurricane. Unless that's like a pole or something. I'm going to go over to the dark side and see what civilization exists. But how's it going, Jax? Happy New Year. Hopefully your new year is uh, a lot brighter and... Uh, you know, everything goes nice and, and well for you guys, for all of you in the new year compared to the old year. Things have uh, kind of sucked in that year. Here we go. There is civilization on this planet. Um, but look at that. It's like only in certain spots, too. Everything else might be ocean or just uninhabited. Again, artist rendition, obviously. It's very cool, though. I'm sure there's a lot of story and, and background to Mars and everything that, uh, you know, the, the authors and writers have kind of come up with in this process of terraforming. Look at this, it's like a one strip of colonized locations. But it's a lot, look at that. Look at how many lights are there, it's very cool. All right, so our journey starts here for all of our exploring. We're gonna immediately go to a whole bunch of different locations that are very cool, notable locations that people have pointed out you should go and visit. Uh, stellar locations like uh, stars and black holes as well. Uh, things are just essentially around the bubble of civilization in, in the galaxy, right? So the first place we're going to visit from here is a generation ship. And I'll give a little bit of explanation about what those are and the history of everything. So we'll put that into the galaxy map and we'll see how far away that even is from us right now. The first one is in this system. Yeah, easily. Everything's very close around here. So, let's go there. First place we're visiting, after Seoul. Cool. So, uh, to give a little bit of story and background, at least from what I understand, generation ships are ships that were sent several hundred years ago in the, like, you know, the time span, back before FSD technology was done, where we could go and make these wormholes to go from place to place. Before all of this, um, Earth and Mars, they had to send out ships to colonize other stars, right? And so they created generation ships, as you can imagine, which are ships of people who are... Oh, I didn't expect this. Shit. <laughs> I didn't know that this also had a pulsar. That's amazing. God, that freaked me out. That's so cool. Hold on, I gotta get away from this. Wait, they didn't say anything about there being a pulsar in this system. I was looking for a pulsar, but the one that I had picked out is like really, really far away. This, this is way closer. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Look at this thing. There's the generation ship atlas that I wanted to visit, but um, these pulsars are really nice ways to sort of super boost your FSD or the frame shift drive to be able to travel uh, four times the distance in one go. Uh, people use these in like a pulsar or neutron star highway to go from star to star of these types really, really far, really, really fast. Um, I'm not going to use that for anything today. I'm just looking at it. I had one on my list to go to, which was really far away. Good to know this one's a lot closer. Uh, we're not going to use this uh, system, though. So we're going to go over to the generation ship, uh, which is somewhere. I thought it was in this direction. Man, that's really cool, though. God, that, that was a weird feeling, though, to just be like, oh, right, it's right there. Totally unexpected. All right, there's the pulsar. We want to go to... Oh, wait, it's, wait, it's right there. It's right next to the pulsar. Uh, is that safe to do? It must be, right? It's, it's gotta be. It's still 20 second, 20 light seconds out. Oh, this doesn't feel safe to do. 
but it, it must be because they put the generation ship here on purpose uh, in terms of like like the developers put that on purpose god that's so cool the screens are constantly in the way though all right, so anyways, back to the story. So generation ships are these ships which were sent out from Earth and Mars long, long, long time ago before we had the ability to just go to the next system. And so they're generations, uh, they're ships full of people who are meant to live their entire lives out on these ships and then the next generation would go and like colonize or the following generation after that would go and colonize. So they're called generation ships. Now, the idea behind these ships is that they were sent out and then pretty much lost communication with everybody because they're out there and we had no real way to talk to them. They would just be on their way. A lot of these are actually all over the galaxy in certain locations and a lot of them are just kind of lost or abandoned. We we can contact some, like this one I'm sure is already sort of, you know, everybody kind of left the generation ship. Like it looks dead. You can even see their, oh yeah, this is actually really cool because it looks like the ship is totally offline. Um, so they evacuated this ship probably, right? But there are a lot that have no idea about FSD technology. People are still living on them, almost like in the Stone Age compared to what we actually know right now, because they have no idea. Like they were just sent off and that's all that they know, right? That's like maybe the third generation of people or the eighth generation of people who have just lived their lives out on these ships. And they're still out there without having any idea about what we actually ended up discovering. Um, and you can go and find these lost generation ships all over the galaxy. There are some that have already been located. Um, maybe story-wise, the ones that are located have, have already been evacuated maybe over time. Uh, this one's clearly been evacuated because it is completely offline, but you can see that there's like domes for, for agricultural stuff. Uh, there's a whole lot of these spinny bits so that there's at least some simulated gravity, um, you know, through these, uh, uh, these locations being, you know, spun around with centrifugal force. You know, you, you apply gravity to the side. So it's very cool. It looks awesome. I wonder if I can scan it, actually. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's a ton of generation ships within, like, the bubble area. And there are just tons all over the galaxy. I'm sure that there's a whole bunch that have not yet been found at all. We're going to scan this thing. How do I do that? What do I do for that? Where's my, where's my scanny thing? This one. Anything? Did I get... Use data link scanner to interrogate target. Okay. <laughs> I guess there's no additional information about the atlas. Okay. Well, good enough. <laughs> That's all I cared about. I do want to do the regular scanning because it's a system that I've never been to. So let me do that real quick. And then we're going to move on to our next target. I think the Pulsar is way cooler, though. I was totally not expecting there to be a Pulsar right there. Uh, that's really good to know. So the next place we want to go to on the list is um, a crash site. And it, as opposed to some crash sites that had some additional info, this didn't. So I found that slightly more interesting. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a crash site on a planet. Again, I've never really been to any of these things. I've been to Seoul. That's the only place that I've been to in the entire list of where we're going today. Um, Alright, this is here. Okay. There's the generation ship. Alright. Right. right. Uh, where's my button for all these? I do actually wonder if they've kind of progressed the stories and generation ships that were found out in the galaxy. Like if they've been evacuated or if you actually can evacuate them. Or maybe they just are intentionally left alone. Man, wouldn't it suck if you went to a generation ship and maybe they're eight generations in and you're like, hey, by the way, in the time that you guys were all out and, and on this ship living out generations of humanity, um, we've learned everything to be able to completely avoid having to do this ever again. <laughs> Man, it would really suck to those people. Oh my god, that's too close to the star? Okay. Great. 
So knock this out of Super Cruise. But anyways, yeah, that's gotta suck for those people. It's like, well, turns out everything you guys did was a complete waste of time. Totally unnecessary. Um, but my great, 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 great grandfather told me this is the future. Well, turns out we found out some aliens and it enhanced our technology more than ever before, right? I don't think anybody ever saw that one coming. Um, all right, we need to go into Super Cruise to be able to actually scan this stuff. Because here we're looking for a crash site. What? Oh. Alright. Align with escape vector? What do you mean? Come on. Okay. This isn't good. Uh, the heat damage isn't a big deal, though. I have a massive uh, repair module for all the other modules on the ship. Alright, so from here we need to slow down. And we need to go into this mode so that we can scan for planets. Alright, here we go. What is all this? These are signals. But I don't care about signals. I need planets. Uh huh. Wait, this has nothing on it. Oh, that's also not the only planet. Okay. Uh, this, no locations, there's another one here, no locations, where, where is this supposed to be, actually there's, there's a few planets in the system, nothing, okay, uh, keep going, what are we missing here? That's all of them. So where is this crash site? Um, okay, hold on. Hmm. Is there even a crash site here? How would we be able to... Let's see. Features, locations. I guess nothing. Maybe we'll skip this one. It's possible that what I had is out of date. Usually they would be here. They'd be listed as a human location on the uh, on the planet. Or at least something would appear here, but I guess not. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hold on, I can check one more. Lonely crash site. That's the only description of this location. I don't know what that means. You can land on every single one of these, so I wouldn't be surprised if there is something. But I'm not going to go and map each location, because that does take some time. I thought it was going to be a bit more obvious. I don't think the crash site is as interesting as some of the other stuff anyways. Uh, and there's probably more interesting crash sites. So we're going to move on to the next one, which is a second generation ship slightly farther out. We'll see what that one looks like. Galaxy map. We'll go to here. Oh, I don't think that worked. Copy. Paste. What? Am I, am I not clicking the right buttons? Control V. What is going on here? Oh, typing isn't even working. What, what's going on? There we go. This is Generation Ship Artemis. And uh, I just picked this one out because there's like 10 or so Generation Ships in the bubble area. Uh, this one just had a familiar name, you know, with the Artemis program and all. So out of the two Generation Ships that I wanted to visit, this is the second. I wonder if this is also going to have some kind of a pulsar or something. Or if I just got incredibly lucky in the one that I decided to choose. Totally regular. I just got extremely lucky in the generation ship that I chose. Oh, 
All right. Generation ship Artemis. All right, cool. Let's see what this one's like. Mega ship, huge ships that travel between local systems. Yep, yep, yep. This is different from an actual mega ship, though. Mega ships that are not gener. Actually, hold on. So I think story-wise, they actually outfitted some of these generation ships into mega ships in in the form of they're kind of just repurposing them to actually have an FSD and go from place to place. So some of these are a bit more modernized and and not used as generation ships anymore. Whereas generation ships that are out in the galaxy are literally still active and have humans on them who have no idea about you know the universe and what else is happening out here. Um, I guess Atlas was just shut off and not used, whereas Artemis might be. I don't know. I'll have to see what this looks like. It'll take a little bit to get there, though. Uh, in the meantime, I actually wonder if some of this information is in the codex. So I'm going to speed up and then go to the codex. And uh, what does it have here? Yeah, I'm not looking for this stuff. Not discoveries either. Hold on. Uh, it should actually be there, right? Empire Federation Alliance Thargoids. Maybe it's part of the Federation. No. Individuals, corporations. No, I guess they don't have mega ship information here. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Okay, cool. We're getting there very quickly. We'll pass by it in a minute, less than a minute even. So once we get pretty close, I can slow down. What else is in the system, though? Uh, everything is unexplored, so it's just a bunch of planets uh, and stars. And I think, yeah, this is the only thing that's in the system of note. Other stars are a red dwarf and a brown dwarf. The one that we came from was a brown dwarf. Okay. Oh, no, the one that we're going to is a brown dwarf. Okay. All right, no additional information. We'll just go there and see. gets down to about nine seconds I'm gonna slow down there's like a really efficient way to super cruise and be able to get somewhere and, and save like 10 or 30 seconds I'm not entirely aware of all of that quite yet and I don't have very much practice so I, I do it by my own logic and what I've seen and I'll try to optimize that later on Okay, we can wait for seven. Seven, I think, is the... There we go. All right. And then speed it back up into auto. Okay, that should be pretty good. I'll let it take care of itself from there. I want to go there. I want to go literally there. That nebula, Bernard's Loop. I've heard there's some extremely dangerous systems there where, like, uh, lightning smoke clouds are in, in different locations and, and all sorts of things. Um, so someday I'll take the trip to go out there. All right, here we go. Generation Ship Artemis.
two and a half, two, All right, here we are. Hey, this one also looks shut down. Very similar to the previous one. We're gonna go ahead and scan this one right away. Use data link scanner to interrogate. Yeah, okay. So there's no additional information then. It's just generation ship Artemis. That's what we've got. It is slightly different. A little bit of a different layout with uh, the, how the biodomes are and such. Uh, also looks inactive, just from how the lights and everything are. Wait, what is that? Ship, oh! Ship log uplink. Wait a minute, I wonder if the previous one had stuff too. I think I can scan this. But I have to be really, really close to this. Um, is there anything else? Ship log zero and one. Oh, there's four. All right, let's let's take a look at this. We have to be, I think, within a hundred meters to scan it. Oh, this is uplink two. Oh, that's cool. Smuggled an illegal animal on board, a dog. They'd been keeping it in one of the storage pods, stealing food for it from one of the kitchens. Oh my gosh, there's whole stories in this. Wait, I can have somebody talk to me? They voice lined all of this? Yeah, seriously. A wolf. Okay, I actually really like this. Sorry, I'm, I'm a big lore fanatic with this kind of stuff. The fact that they voiced all this is complete... Like, that's a massive surprise to me. I wasn't expecting that in the slightest. And these are just, like, little side stories. It's totally unnecessary. And they did it anyways. Uh, we gotta get the second part, and we'll just kind of listen to it off the side. I wonder if uh, the other one must have had some kind of log as well, too. I must have just missed it or didn't notice. If I checked contacts uh, contacts on the side panel, I would have noticed, but I didn't do that. Now I know. That's a thing. Oh my god, look at this! Oh my god, it's a freaking text block. have noises and sound effects. It's a different person. Oh, 
its flesh, flung out into the cosmos to spread their seed. Uncaring children ejected from an uncaring womb, spreading out like a disease, infecting all they touch. So soon, all will bleat as they do. They take only the choicest this flock, cast down those that will not follow their sightless herders to nothing. They pray in the week for their own games, while they preach about unity and togetherness. They shall be snatched. They shall be scattered. They shall be ravaged. The hell? What kind of story is this? Oh, this is going all sorts of ways, isn't it? We can listen to the rest of this, huh? There's no details on who's talking. What is all this? What does it mean? They recorded this. Okay. Frontier is known for doing like really, really good audio work and visual work and everything, so... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this stuff is actually just some guy in a room that's actually throwing something against something else. Instead of just sound bites or, or whatever. But man, they really took the time to do this. Alright. Well, that was pretty cool, actually. That's, um... That was pretty unexpected. Let's go on to the next thing. So, um, I don't know the location of this. I don't know how far away the next couple of places are, but they were on a list of places you must go. So... If this is too far out of the way, we're not going to go there. But Beetleguiz, if I'm saying it right, and if I can even click it, is one of the large... Oh, that's far. Oof. That's 520 light years in the wrong direction. Uh, because actually, I need to go up this way uh, to the Colsac Nebula. Okay. Well, Beetleguiz is um, one of the largest stars in the nearby area. It's a massive, massive star. And, and just a lot of people like to go there and just you know take a look at it. Um, yeah, I know. What does that mean? What do all the logs mean? Absolutely no idea. It's just a, like a side story or something, I guess, they put together. Um, I'm guessing that people just maybe rage after several generations about why the hell they're doing it in the first place. Why are they on this ship their entire lives? Why do they know nothing else uh, than just the ship? People kind of go crazy, I guess. That's my interpretation of what was going on on the Artemis with whatever this one guy is. Or how, how the wolf or dog fits into any of it? No clue. Absolutely none. <laughs> um, it must have been in the first generation because if somebody snuck a dog on board, they probably didn't have anyone to breed it with, right? Any other dogs to breed it with? So, um, so this was all within the first generation of the ship. Maybe... 
people just went crazy because you know they didn't understand why they were doing it within the first generation that's piecing things together seems to be the logical uh, line of thought there um, all right so beta is a little bit out of the way the other one that apparently is within the uh, within the bubble is this system which is Oh, God, again, that's really far away. 300, though. That's not too bad. How many jumps is that? It's still the wrong direction. Six jumps. Oh, actually, you know, six jumps isn't that bad. But then i got to go six jumps back to get to the other location. So there's an asteroid ba uh, base here. But there's asteroid bases all over the place. So we might be able to find an asteroid base based on... Uh, based on like the, the following locations. So these were the two question marks I had in my list because I wasn't sure where they were. I kind of just put them in here after we looked at the uh, generation ship. So they're a little bit out of the way. So we're not going to go to that. Um, this next one, however, is in the path. And it is we're going back to the actual like exploration path that I had set out. And it is this particular star system. Wait, what? That's 900 away. Oh. Oh, I see. I was looking at it being flat. And it looks like it's close by, but in reality, it's very, very low. Uh, we may as well go to Bernard's Loop if we're going to that system. So this star is just an interesting star because it's a carbon star. And I wanted to know if that looks any different from a regular one. But it's definitely not in the bubble. Uh, so we'll skip that one, too. <laughs> All right, now we're finally going on the direction I think we need to. Um, with some interesting planets. Let's see, where is all this? There we go. All right, now we're going in the right direction. This is only a few jumps. I'd rather go in this direction. Yep, with seven jumps. Uh, this, okay, hold on. Uh, I can't because the target is obscured, so. Unselect the system, go into super cruise. Now we're going to see it and frame shift charge again. All right, so the next place we're going has a planetary feature. That's cool. And I don't exactly know what we're looking for, but apparently it's such a notable planetary phenomenon that it should have a tourist beacon next to it pointing out exactly what it is and where it is. We'll see. Yeah, no problem, Jax. Have a good one. Happy New Year again. Take care. All right, we're going to pick up some fuel. I have a tier 7 uh, fuel scoop on this, so this should be very, very quick. Oh my god, look at how quickly that thing fills up. Jeez. Really, really fast fuel scoop. afraid of going over to the Colsac Nebula, though. I've never seen a Thargoid myself yet. If the first time I see a Thargoid is in VR, I'm gonna shit my pants. I mean, that's just, that's, that's just what's gonna happen. I should also be uh, scanning all these locations. here. Nope. So this is going outside of bubble space. And then from here, oh, the next one after this is the black hole. OK, 
Okay, cool. God, that... Popping into a black hole system must be, uh... Like, for the first time ever, should be interesting, too. Because I, I guess it's not... There's no star in that system. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any star in that system. So literally, as soon as I get into the system, the first thing I'm going to see is a black hole, by my understanding. Um, so I don't think I'll shit my pants for that one. But I am excited to see a black hole for the first time in a video game in VR like this, you know? That'll be after we see this planetary feature. And then on the list after that is two more planetary features, which are unique. And then the Colsac Nebula, which is where the Thargoids are, and, um, and active. There's a lot of lore and stuff going on around the Colsac Nebula, even at this moment. So uh, it'll be interesting to see all of that. This ship is so good at just going places. Ah, really, really, really good ship for um, exploring with an extremely high um, jump range. God, it's just not scanning the system. It keeps restarting it. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is two more jumps. Okay. And then I'm looking for a... Uh, I'm just looking for a tourist beacon. the Colossac Nebula actually has a, like, has tons of bases there. So maybe I can just hang around there for a little bit. Do some missions. Maybe I should just check out all the Thargoid stuff while I'm in the area. What is this? Five bodies? Um... What is this? This has to be a planet. What is this? System map? What do we got? Yep, one planet. Okay. Well, it looks like an odd planet. What is that? Okay, it just had to load in. Okay. Cool. is it. We're going to get fuel and scan. Alright, and then, uh, okay, simple. A lot of asteroid belts. We're looking for a beacon. Oh, and we got nothing. Alright, uh, we have to scan the system then. There it is! G gas giant with ammonia-based light. This is actually it. And it's got one human location. Literally the first thing that I scanned. Um, okay. Where is that? There it is. Radioactive green. 
Tourist beacon. Wow, okay, I just got really lucky then. It's a gas giant. It's a gas giant with ammonia-based life. Um, so I'm going to put this into auto and take a look at the system, actually. What do we got here? Whoa. Okay. Oh, there it is. It even shows up on this uh, differently. That's cool. I wonder, is there any ammonia-based planets here? I don't think so. This particular gas giant exhibits vivid coloration due to the presence of free-floating radioplankton, carbon-based algae that extract energy from the planet's intense radiation flux. Oh, that's a ring something. It's a ring planet. I want to know where you can see a ringed star. Apparently ringed stars are an actual thing. They do exist. You can have a star with just a bunch of rings around it, like Saturn you know, has with its rings, which I, I'm not surprised about. I just never thought about it before. And it is a thing, and it is a thing in this game as well. Um, I didn't actually look for those. I don't know where the nearest one might be. Also, apparently the shadowing on it isn't perfect. <laughs> so, like, you can see you can see shadows as if there, it was a planet instead. So it's a little bit weird, but that's okay, whatever. Uh, I still wanted to see one at some point. All right, so we are here at the Tourist Beacon, which I don't... Uh, I guess we'll land at the Tourist Beacon and scan it. Why not? I think that adds it to a log that I get to keep forever. There it is. Gas giant with ammonia-based life. That's really cool. Radioactive plankton, radio, radio plankton. Very shiny green. Nothing we haven't seen in No Man's Sky, of course, but uh, it's like odd and uncommon, so it is very cool. We should land here soon. We'll scan the thing. Maybe there will be some kind of story or additional information. Oh, there's ships here. Okay. Alright. We need to scan this beacon. Oh, uh, we're going too fast. No! Oh, that's it. Scan complete. I didn't even have to scan it myself. So, this gas giant with ammonia-based life offers a rather unusual and very distinct color display. Uh, earning it the nickname Radioactive Green. A suggested tourist destination by Commander Falconfly. That's an actual person! Ah, so... So that's one thing, is that you can actually suggest beacons and tourist beacons in certain locations around cool things. So Falconfly is an actual player. That's cool. All right, let's go on to the next place then. So next up, oh god, next up is the black hole. Uh, I'm both really excited to see this and and like slightly terrified because I'm in VR and I don't know what to expect. All right. How many jumps is that? Four. Oh, great. It's even closer than I thought. Um, but how come it didn't plot the thing right away? Oh. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Alright, bye planet. We're going to a black hole now. Oh my gosh. Even this in virtual reality, this part, 
warping from place to place. Even this still, like, creeps me out. It's just so unnatural feeling. Like, this isn't normal. You just to see things flying around like this. It's very, very cool, but very unexpected and, and strange feeling. So that's the galaxy. Look at that. You can see it a lot clearer from here. I guess we're a little bit closer to the galactic core. Like a slight, tiny, tiny bit closer. So the galaxy is a bit more uh, vivid, maybe. Ooh, that right there is the Pleiades Nebula. That's where all the Thargoid stuff is mainly happening. I think one of the first contact locations. I could be wrong about that. I've been there once anyways, because I had to do... I had to pick up something there for an engineer. Alright, is this it? Two more jumps. And then we'll go to the Colsack Nebula after that. Which actually is right there. You can kind of see it there. Next to, like, it's in this direction. The, Col the Colsack Nebula is a dark nebula. Everything is like, um very black and that's the color of the nebula. So I don't know what things look like in there. And I am again slightly afraid to find out because as usual if it's something different or new it's gonna be freaky and weird, right? Alright, this is it. This is where the black hole is. Next jump. Also, yeah, so right right here is the Colsack Nebula. You can kinda see the outline for it in the dark space of the nebula. We are going in that direction. But we're going to stop at this black hole. Ugh. Wait, it looks like it's a star, actually. Hmm? Maybe. Maybe the black hole is near this system, or in this system somewhere? Okay, okay. Regular blue star. Where's the black hole? Oh, gosh. Oh, it's far. It's one of these. Let's see what the system map says. Oh, there it is. It's gotta be this thing, right? Uh... Yeah, that's fun. Let's go. Oh, you, whoa, look at that on the scanner, too. A little bit far out, but let's go in that direction. That's so cool. I think this is the closest black hole to the bubble. And it's not that far out if you have a, an explorer vessel anyway, so this is it's a pretty quick trip to get around anywhere in this area. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time, so let me look at the galaxy map while we do this. Oh, jeez. This is still um, only maybe halfway to the Colsack Nebula. Not even halfway, a little under halfway, but that's not too bad. Again, the, making these trips is quick in the vessel that's good for it. Um, I'm gonna look for what locations here are habited, or hab habited, colonized, I should say. So we're gonna look by allegiance. Oh, what? Wait, nothing? 
But that can't be right. Mm. Even independence should show up on this map, but I got nothing. Oh, there we go. There's one. Wait. What? Is this really the only thing in the coal sack nebula that's, uh... Colonized? I can't be right. But I guess, I guess that is it, yeah. So, hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to think. The only other thing I can think of is to check civilization. No. There's no Thargoid civilizations here. Yeah, I don't know what's exactly going on in this nebula. Um, I would see Guardian is on here. Actually, let me take a look really quickly here to see if Guardian shows up as a civilization. I don't think it would, because there are no Guardians alive. That we know of. Yeah, I don't think that even shows up on this chart. Whoa, that's... What is this? Why is it populated by humans? Independent. 4.2 million people live there. Okay. I don't know. Alright. Oh my gosh, we're still a ways out here. Oh, black holes are typically the stellar remnants of supermassive stars of 20 solar masses or more that have reached the end of their lives. Nuclear fusion ceased and the star collapsed to the most extreme point possible. Where gravity was so extreme, light could no longer escape. I'm literally just describing the black hole here, but whatever, fine. I am talking about it. Now, if matter should fall in on to such a body, an extreme burst of gamma radiation will be emitted, but otherwise the body is only visible by the gravitational distortion in the vicinity. In many cases, black holes can be seen emitting brightly in X-rays because of matter falling on their surface from a companion body. So actually, I think there are two stars here, um, and they're close to each other. They might be like a thousand light seconds apart. I doubt that they have any gravitational pull on each other right now where like it's getting sucked in. Um, maybe the star is slowly going towards the black hole. Yeah, because they look pretty far apart from one another. All right, we got a little bit to just hang on here. What do we got in the codex about black holes? Uh, astronomical bodies, right? I think that's what this would be considered. And, uh, oh, here it is. Wait, there's a black hole in Maya? Really? I've been there. I didn't know that. Oh. Uh, greatest mass discovery location is where I am right now. Smallest mass discovery location is in Maya. Hmm. And this is all data for this region of space. For, for this particular region, the inner Orion Spur. All right. Getting there. We can play a little song with the uh, scanner. I love those kind of things, just play a random note. It's very eerie sounding. Now right, we still got some time for this. Maybe we can plan out the uh, trip to the Colossac Nebula. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going or what to expect in the absolute slightest. Um, so I think we go to one place here that's just nearby first, like here. Oh, it's really close by too, man. It's only a few jumps away. Uh, yeah, it's five jumps away to get there. Oh my gosh. Everything is so close by. I, I just, I love having this exploration ship. It's really good. Oh, 
Sorry, I'm looking up into the sky because that's my monitor. I can see my monitor from up there. My second monitor. Um, all right. Ugh. Where's the other star? Is it? Is it this one? No. What is it then? Where is the second star? Lock. What? Oh, it is that one. Okay. What happened? Align with target? No, 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 no. There we go. We're staying on course. We're going here. It's just it's menacing. Look at it. look at that thing. Now, by my understanding, if you try to go into the black hole, it acts the same way as a star would. It doesn't let you. It gets too hot. Something like that. I am not gonna test this right now because I want to actually make it to the cold sac nebula. Um, I mean, I don't really. I, I guess I could. It's, I don't think it's gonna destroy the ship. I don't know. We'll mess around a little bit. I guess we'll see what I feel like. When we get there, if I don't poop myself. Wait, where is the Colsack Nebula? Where is it? Okay, I'm gonna. Hold on, set it to auto right now. So I wanna look around. Where is the Colsack Nebula? Oh, it's right there! Okay. All right, speed back up. <sighs> I really don't even know what to expect. I've seen pictures of this, and even small GIFs, but in VR, I don't really know what to expect, so I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but, you know, that's normal. I'm sure after my fifth... Uh, spawning of a black hole, I'm going to be like, eh, whatever, it's nothing. This is all still new to me. I like the experience. Um, I'm sure anybody who's played the game for six years would love to have the experience of seeing one of these for the first time again. It's like how I wish I played Arcage for the first time again, like completely forgetting the past. It's, it's always fun to explore something for the first time, to try something for the first time, but it is nerve-wracking in many ways. All right. Should I just go into uh, Super Cruise Assist now? It'll be a little bit slower to get there. But I also don't want to screw up. Nah, it's too slow. As I'm getting closer to this, gravitation, the gravitational pull makes it so that my ship is slower in super cruise. So you can see that my actual ship is down, you know, 75 uh, speed of light, 68 times the speed of light, 65 times the speed of light. Hey, Quack. How's it going, man? Ready to uh, ready to witness me shooting myself? Myself, because I'm about to see a black hole for the first time in this game in virtual reality. really close to it. I don't, I don't even know what to expect. Alright, I'm going to go into auto mode now. Now I just sit back and wait until uh, something suddenly appears. Which, I guess it's a black hole, right? Uh, there's nothing. Nothing's going to appear. Um... Like I said, I don't know what I'm expecting. Now, if there was like a nebula behind it or something, here it's just like black space in the background, so I really can't tell that there's something in like something in front of me. Uh, if there was a nebula behind, actually, I could just 
go to the other side of the black hole so that the galaxy is behind it. I want to see what that looks like. Let's do that first. Okay, we're speeding up. We're going this way. Oh, that's freaky. That's actually freaky. Look at that. God, that scares the shit out of me. Where's the gallery? Okay, it's over there. Yeah, yeah, there's a black hole there. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Look at that. Okay, alright, now we're going in. Now we're going in, alright? We're gonna see this. Let's see what this looks like. From a safe distance. <sighs> but the galaxy is a background. Seven seconds. Here we go. We're here. Super Cruise Assist is going nuts. What am I looking for? It should take me out of Super Cruise, I think. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know what to expect. Yeah, the assist is going nuts. We're less than one light second out. Oh my god. Alright. Are we are we there? What do we do? Is Super Cruise Assist able to do this? Oh I'm here. <gasps> god, it's so weird, it's freaky. Oh, there it is! Yep, that's close enough. What the fuck? Why is it not taking me out of... Whoa! God. Okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I don't know if it takes you out of Super Cruise or not. I have... I have no idea. Move throughout of the blue zone. Look how it just warps everything. All of the... Wait, what? That looks odd. It's almost like it has a universe of its own. We're gonna slow down. And we're gonna, I guess... I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to just get out of Super Cruise? It's 91 kilometer, 91,000 kilometers away. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to spin back up. I don't know how this works. Oh my god, it's still warping everything. It warps everything. This whole space is weird. What the fuck? This is so weird. It's behind me, okay. I've never done this before. I have no idea what to expect. Um, somebody said to try to look at it through a scanner. So let's just do that really quickly. Oh, you, you can hear stuff. Oh, that is weird. Very freaky. Okay, all right. Let's just, uh... Fuck it. We're going in. I'm gonna let Super Cruise just kill me. All right? If I end up back in space, who cares? You don't lose anything in this game anyways, but... I just want to know. Oh, we're here! What? Too close. Oh. 
That's it. It just warps everything. Uh, I don't. I don't even know what to think about this. God, look at that! Look how everything's just moving. All the light. Uh, what do you mean escape vector? All right, heat sink. God, this is so weird. Oh my god. Whew. This is the weirdest feeling I've ever seen in this game. How did they program this? What did they do? What have they done? God, it's so strange. It's so not normal. Okay. Um, I want to go, I want to have the background of the galaxy, but it's like, you can't have the background of the galaxy. You're so close to it that it sucks up all of the light of everything around you. So you can't really have a background. So that's it. That's just what, that's what a black hole is. From this distance, you can see, at least, you know, how everything kind of warps. You get any closer and you don't see anything. That's amazing. I don't think I'm doing this right. Like, I, I don't really know what to expect. I, I think... I think that is correct. If you go within this weird sphere that we're seeing... You just stop seeing things from the outside. And we, we were even overheating at that point, so I think that was the actual... I think we did it correctly. All right. Well, let's go to the Colsack Nebula. <laughs> oh my god, that's cool. That was really awesome. Um, I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. It definitely wasn't that. That, that was... Whew. That was something. All right, we're only a couple jumps away. Five jumps away from the Colsack Nebula. This is where there's a lot of Thargoid activity. Um, and it's just a cool looking nebula. So we'll take a look around there. I think, I think players have fully mapped out this nebula because there's a lot of stars there, but there's weird things happening here story-wise and, and such, right? Um, so I don't think I'm going to be able to discover any new locations people have never been to before. Um, but I'm really not sure what to expect at all anyways, because it's just a bunch of star systems in a nebula. And the nebula just happens to look completely black, right? It's not emitting any light... Well, yeah, it's not like it's emitting any other colors. So, as we get closer, we'll see that. Four jumps away. After this, we could actually take a pulsar back and see how that works. Um, I think the closest pulsar that we know of is actually quite far away from the from the Colsack Nebula. So maybe that's not the best way to do it. But we've already seen a pulsar. I didn't even know that there was one right within the bubble. We accidentally found it. Yeah, like all this is mapped out. We can already see planets here. So other players have been here. We are quite far from Sol, and from the bubble. Um, but even then, you know, all this area people have explored, people have already mapped out. Um, it's a big universe, but these are like notable locations people like to go and visit. 
There we go, the nebula's getting larger as we're getting closer. star system has a binary star. There's two stars dancing around each other. It's always fun to see. There's only four stars in the system to begin with. Whoa, Delta Centauri? That's a named system nearby. wonder what's so special about that. Okay. Uh, the Colsac Nebula is right there. It's, <laughs> as expected, it, it just doesn't look like anything. It's just there. Muska Dark Region, two jumps away. No clue what to expect. This has all been explored already. Um, but yeah, this is it. This is going to be the edge of the nebula, right here. Alright, so this is just a random system that I picked just outside the nebula. I don't know what to expect. I don't know if this is Thargoid space, and if there's a chance for them just checking us out and interdicting us. I've never had that happen to me. I know that there are so many people who have had it happen like 300 plus times, so that's not me. So. We're here. We're just outside of the nebula. So we're gonna let the scan happen. Three bodies, okay. Fuel scooping complete. And this is it. I think this is it right in front of us. So, I don't think it's anything super special looking. I think some of the other nebulas are a lot cooler. Um, yeah, we're right here. So we can go in, I guess, uh, just to see what it looks like inside. We're going to pick this one. Yeah, and then we're going to go check out the, uh, the place where humans are, right over there after. So let's go. Let's see if it looks like any different from within the nebula. Here we go. I think we're just good on heat. inside the nebula. Yeah, I think the bubble nebula probably looks a lot more interesting than this one. Fuel scooping complete. Oh, unidentified signal sources. Somebody's ship is here. Somebody's fleet carrier is here. What's so special about this location? Is this a uh, third grade location? Is everything within the nebula? A thoroughbred look. Whoa! Yep. Oh my god, a level 9. Non human signal. This is all Thargoid. Everything.
We could have... Okay, so at any point in time in this area, we could get interdicted uh, when going from system to system. But this is a tough one. Look how many high systems there are. There's so many non-human signals. Jeez. Oh my god. Threat 9. So yeah, this is it. This is all that space. Um... I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't as crazy about seeing that. I just wanted to see what it looked like inside the nebula, and it's kind of like, eh, whatever, you know? It's just dark, that's all. You can't really see the galaxy from here. You just see whatever's within the nebula, and I guess that's it. Covered in nebula gases. Just dark, that's all. Not the most impressive or crazy thing in the universe. All right. Uh, well, I hope we don't get interdicted. Because that's going to scare me. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, I've seen it happen. I know what it looks like. I, it shouldn't matter to me. But, you know, I'm in VR and, and I'm doing this uh, on purpose. So we're going to go here. And we're just going to see what happens. Um, there's like a 20% chance to get interdicted. Something like that. I mean, if it happens, I'm not a threat. It's not a big deal. I'll just sit there and wait it out. It'll be cool. Nope, not interdicted. We can see the star in front of us. Okay. So this system should have non-human signals as well. Um, I think. Let's take a look. Hmm? What is this? Why is it not weapons fire? No, oh, yep, okay, so there's Thargoid activity here too. Convoy dispersal. Weapons fire. This is what it sounds like. But we want to go to whatever station exists here. Because there is something. Um, we have a couple landable planets. There's a nav beacon? What stations are here? Oh, they must be on the planet. Whoa! Oh, this is it! Um, it's a starport built within an excavated asteroid. Okay, so we did get to see one in... Uh, we did actually get to see one then, or we're going to. The one I had planned for before was way, way too out of the way. But this is one. So let's go check it out. Is there any system chatter from other play- Ah! Oh my god. I don't even have any cargo. It's just like a little eagle. We'll just check this place out. These are probably all non-human signals with Thargoid activity all over the place. So there's a little bit of lore here. And I'm probably going to butcher it. But just to kind of talk about it a bit. Um, 
this area is essentially a it's an alliance research area where they're doing research on the ammonia worlds in the coal sack nebula now there was actually recently a community goal to bring more data and research here so that they can use it to actually colonize the area however those colonization attempts based on our galactic news information have actually since uh, kind of failed and uh, to no surprise the company behind it is a little bit sketchy and people are thinking that they're actually using it to learn more about the Thargoids than anything else so they think it's a front they're saying oh yeah we're gonna colonize this stuff but in reality they're actually just studying the Thargoids and they might even be using it to weaponize some new things or who knows what right we're kind of um, not aware of what's actually happening behind the scenes uh, from the Alliance um, facilities that are doing research in this nebula or around this nebula. So that's I, I think that's more or less the story of what's happening, that players are actually able to interact with stuff. For example, if the players did not successfully complete the community goal or even avoided it on purpose and stopped other players from completing it as much as they could, in order to kind of, you know, prevent it from happening, um, we might have actually seen a completely different outcome that uh, Frontier Development would kind of give us as a story and lore to what's occurring in this location. So, um, like, it could have slowed down their progress, or it could have actually completely, you know, who knows, right? I, I don't know. But uh, the community did actually go and complete the research stuff, and in return, the community got, like, a really cool scanner thing that's really, really powerful for scanning planets. So again, that's my understanding of what occurred with this lore, like all the lore stuff happening here in, in like around the Colsac Nebula. And again, totally new to this stuff. So I'm just kind of reading and seeing how this stuff, you know, w what's happening. I'm like a complete innocent bystander watching the news, right? Um, so it's cool to see all of this and to be here, to be an actual part of it is a different story and to, to kind of have a some play in, in what's occurring is, is totally different. Not something that I intend to, to do at this point. Not quite yet. I have other goals. I'm just kind of exploring, right? Uh, so this is an asteroid base. I've never seen them before. So we're stopping by. And I'm in VR, so it's a bit more menacing to see this stuff. We already saw a black hole. It was ridiculous. Uh, completely unexpected. Um, in VR, it's like, again, really, really cool looking. I think this is going to be one of the last stops on the uh, on the sightseeing tour that I put my uh, put together for myself today. Oh no, that's not true. Uh, there's a, a couple of other planetary uh, phenomenon things that I want to go check out, which actually I may have already missed. I think maybe they're on the way back. Let me take a look. Um, oh, they are on the way back. I did miss them, but that's okay. That's fine. I could have seen them before coming here, but I didn't do that, which is not a big deal. That's all perfectly good. We'll go check those out after this. Are these all wakes? I think they are. Whoa. Well, oh, that... That is literally an asteroid. And the asteroid is contacting me. All right, uh, let's go back. You guys have 37 landing pads in this thing. Jeez, what faction is this? Alliance Exp Expeditionary Act, uh, Pact, okay. I guess the entrance is over here. Yep, right here. Oh my god. Literally a base just in the side of an asteroid. That's awesome. That is really, really cool. We're just gonna let it auto-dock me. Look at this thing. So close to this to this particular uh, star as well. I 
I'm sure the inside probably looks the same as any station. No, there's actually rocks. Whoa, that's cool. That's actually really cool. Okay, what happens if I go in for, like, outfitting? What does it look like underneath? Alright, so far this is like a station. Everything is metal. I don't see any rocks. Yeah, this part is all uh, manufactured, right? Okay, yeah. Still cool, though. At least uh, they kind of made everything very unique with this particular station. Let's see. Anything unique here? Contact? Oh, there's an interstellar factor here. Ooh, I can get my... Uh... Oh. I guess not. I can't get my... Oh, it's a different ship that has a bounty on it. Never mind. What missions do they have here? Alright, here's some money. Mining, mining, mining. Everything is mining. And that's that's pretty much it. Okay. More mining. Uh-huh. Okay. And just donations. Okay, so they're looking for things and they mine stuff, and that's all that you can generally do around this location. Got it. Alright. I'm not really surprised by that. It's not like there's any civiliza uh, civilization nearby to, like, try to take over or colonize or whatever, right? So, uh, cool. That's done. All right. We're going to go to the next stop, which is... Uh, this location... Oh, this could be far. Oh no. 400 light years away. Oh, it's... Oh, okay, I thought it was going to be up here. I guess not. It's just really far. Damn. How many jumps is that? If that's more than five, I'm not going to do it. It's eight. I mean, it's not too bad. Eight jumps isn't super crazy. I just don't want to have to do that right now on the stream. Let's try the second place. can't click there. Uh, where is this? This is, that, this is even farther, isn't it? Yeah, this is 800 away. Okay, so these are really far. See, on the 2D map, everything looks like it's right on top of each other, but, because uh, that's what I was looking at online, is a 2D map of just the galaxy like this. And in reality, these locations are extremely far away from each other because they are on, uh, they're just down here, right? So that's a bummer. We're in this space, though, so we can at least try to see if there's anything around here that we do want to see. Uh, anything around the Coal Sack Nebula. Um, what I could try to do... is... Ooh, I can try to look for certain stars. Also, I don't know how to get rid of these lines. I guess like that. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, no carbon stars around here? There was a carbon star that I wanted to visit, but that was also out of the way. It doesn't look like there's any around here, though. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, I guess pulsars don't show up here? Like, the place that we went to, uh, this one, what kind of star is that classified as? Let me see. So, we went to... Um, Cherik Drift, which turned out to be a pulsar. Oh my god. This one. 
This was a pulsar. But in reality, it's classified as a DC white dwarf star. Um, are they all classified like that? So if I go back here and I look for DC D white dwarf star, let's see. Do any of these flip on and off? Not really. So it's instant. Uh, any nearby? I, mean, I guess not. Maybe this is it. Okay. Is there anything else nearby that we want to see? Um, Chameleon is down here. Uh, what is this one? Colsac Dark Region. Colsac. Colsac Dark Region versus Colsac. What is the difference? There's not even any, uh, there's no stars in here. Just a blob. Okay. What is this? What are these stars? This is a just a regular white star. It's not a white dwarf star. So what are these classified as? Wolf Rhea? No. F-type? Oh, they're F-type stars. Okay. So... Um... Hmm. How do I find this stuff? This is all very new to me. Look how many freaking stars there are here. It's, it's crazy. It's nuts. Okay. Well, we could head back, but I, I want to see what else there is around here. Like, now that I'm here, we can go check something out. Right? I mean, it doesn't take that long to get out here, to be fair. This asp is ridiculous. So, I, uh, last week I actually went out to to the guardian areas and I I essentially got enough tech and and materials to get myself the guardian FSD booster so the thing that allows me to boost uh, or to go even farther with the frame shift drive so I did that and I got enough to get me a fighter uh, my favorite one a really really good fighter that I have on my ships now so um, that's kind of what I did mainly there I also got enough to get a railgun to, to get a guardian railgun so if I do ever want to go hunting for aliens uh, and, and the Thargoids, I have an option to do that. I have some tools at my disposal for it. Um, I didn't spend too much time in the Guardian place because it's kind of boring having to go and, and like farm up everything. So I just got at least the things that I wanted. Um, and so with that, I've been able to, of course, give that Guardian booster, the FSD booster, to these ships, to the ones that I use for exploration. And it's been a lot nicer to, um, you know, obviously it's much quicker to get from place to place now. So actually now with that, I could probably make the trip to Colonia. And it wouldn't even take a super long time compared to without the FSD booster. Um, and, but that's, again, really, really, really far away. And I don't even know if it would block the course. I, I think that's too far. Let's see. Would that plot automatically? Probably not. Yeah, maximum distance exceeded. So this is 22,000 light years away still. If I went a little bit closer, um, no, still the maximum distance exceeded. Let's go over here. Because I want to see how many jumps it is if I were to just go like this. In reality, if you're going to Colonia, you probably want to use some kind of a neutron highway uh, or like essentially a bunch of uh, neutron stars to, and, and hop from neutron star into neutron star since they give you a nice boost in the uh, FSD distance. Oh my god, this is really maximum distance exceeded, jeez. Oh my god, what is the maximum distance? 10,000 maybe? That's not even 10,000. What is the maximum distance on autopilot? I have no idea. I thought it was a lot higher than this. 
No, this can't be right. 5,000 is still not... Is it 5,000 then? No, what? How can that be right? I've seen much higher uh, distance uh, distances being plotted than this. No, this. This can't be right. This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, this this doesn't make any sense to me. So is it just gonna say that's everything? Is it just bugged? Wait, it actually is bugged. No way. Oh, I see why. I think it's because I, I need to use fastest route. Let's see. Aha. Okay, now we're talking. So if we go back to Colonia here. And in fact, I have it bookmarked. Um, wait, what? What is all this? Why, why are all these... Why do they have the symbol next to them? Guardian beacon for vessels. Guardian easy data. Share with your squadron. Oh, I see. They're squadron links. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. So we want to look at... Colonia. Okay, so that is actually still the maximum distance exceeded, but I expected that. Uh, I just didn't expect it to be like a thousand away. It's still doing that. So let's go to here. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit to plot a route. All right, how many jumps is that? 354. Cool. Um... Yeah, so I'll do that trip sometime. <laughs> I that's that's a long way to go. How many jumps is it back to Seoul at this point? Or at least back to where I was. Up here. Probably like ten. I don't know, fifteen maybe at the most. Nine. Jeez, it's so easy. Oh my god, I love this ship, dude. It's so good. All right, let's do it. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. Maybe I'll do some fighter combat if I want to, and then I'll head off after that. I really wanted to just document this whole journey of me just going to these places for the first time. Um, yeah. Which we were able to accomplish. I still really like this asteroid base, though. I wish we had more of those all over. Oh, no. The place I'm going to is behind the sun, this, this star here. Destination target obscured. Um, there is still a non-zero chance that I get interdicted by a Thargoid. Which, I mean, I don't... I don't know, man. I don't think I'm ready for that to happen in VR. I don't know what to expect. Like, I, I know what to expect, but at the same time, I don't know, you know? It's a weird thing. Oh my god, I need to get out of the way. I want to see. What? Oh, good. We're good. And we're 
good. This is all still the Muscadark region. I should have been honking. There's three... What's the third one? Oh, it's just another star. Okay. Alright. I think we're out of the Colsac Nebula space. We're just heading back. Man, people have all discovered this stuff. Look at this. People have been here all over the place. Let me take a look at the system. Jeez, everything's been explored. Has this been mapped out? Yep, even mapped out. But I guess we're just taking a path back to like this, the, the bubble area, which a lot of people would do from the Colsac Nebula, so I'm not really that surprised. Pretty much everything down this line of uh, systems has probably uh, at least, at the very least, been pinged or, or honked through. Twenty-nine orbital, uh, orbital plane established. Okay, all right. Let's get a little bit of uh, fuel. I want to see something too. System map. I guess a lot of those might have been asteroids. Oh. Um, okay. <clears throat> This stuff has been mapped as well. Twenty-nine here. Let's see what that is. Uh oh. Oh, right, there we go. Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has all been mapped. It's not the eighth planet with the eighth moon. But, um, somebody's been here, so no Raxla here. Not that we know of, anyways.
right, nearly back already. Yeah, that's good. At least I can go to pretty much anything nearby and it doesn't take more than 10 minutes or so. I wonder how far away the bubble nebula is, actually. Or some of the other cooler things, too. Like, I can do a trip that's like an hour or so. And then start streaming from there. If it's something really cool. Or I can just take the Neutron Highway and go... I guess to Colonia, or, or some of the more well-known places. Ooh, 26 here. mapped yeah these things are all mapped too and people are really on it really on top of uh, making sure that everything is uh, is mapped to some degree at least in the more common routes I guess we're pretty close to the bubble anyway so at this point everything's probably explored no doubt anything like all the systems around me probably are too saying I'm one jump away from where I'm going. Yeah, we're good. Well, at least it was pretty good. It was a pretty good trip. You got to see a lot of things. Uh, unexpected stuff like the radio logs um, and the neutron star at a place where I absolutely was not expecting. I'd say this was totally worth it. And I'm glad that I have it all kind of documented uh, on a Twitch stream. It'll be up on the YouTube channel after. My first time going out and sightseeing. Like, specifically exploring to see cool stuff. Well, there's a mega ship here. Alright, we're gonna go back to the station where all my stuff is. And I think we'll wrap it up here. There's not much else to show. Just going to be docking the station. Uh, I may as well just go and eat. I don't think I'm going to do any fighter combat stuff today. Maybe next time. Because I still do like doing a lot of the fighter stuff. Especially from VR, right? Uh, VR fighter combat is probably the most fun thing that I've uh, been able to do in the game. Just from a combat sort of perspective. And like yesterday I was in somebody's fighter. Not in VR, but just in a fighter. And honestly, you could do some pretty good damage from uh, some of the ones that are like the that have the particle accelerators or, or some of the nicer weapons. They do tons of damage. Like, uh, I was able to solo two vultures yesterday. And um, there was another ship, too, that I was able to kill myself, too. Like, it's actually really, really cool. The fighters aren't, aren't that bad, as long as you're using a good fighter for it. So I want to do more of that. Um, but otherwise, I think we'll wrap up today. We did our nice stream of just exploring stuff. Saw a lot of cool things. Um, I don't know whether or not I'm, I'm going to be able to stream tomorrow. I think tomorrow's Sunday, so we'll we'll see. I'll try to I'll try to say something in at least my own Discord whenever I know. Um, so you know, if you're interested in that, below in the Twitch channel, there's uh, links to the Game Preserver Three Community Discord, which is like super brand new because um, I'm kind of phasing away from the Arcage content. So uh, there is still the Arcage Discord if if people are looking for that kind of content. But um, and now I'm sort of. I'm starting the whole community Discord, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, and in the new year, if I'm able to stream more, then maybe we can make better use of that. We can use it to make groups for, like, Among Us or something, or, you know, whatever. Whatever people are up to at the time. We'll see. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it. Right now, it's just a bunch of my friends and other folks who are just kind of hanging out. Want to see my content other than just the Arc Gage stuff. So, it's a good starting point. Um, that's it for today. Appreciate everybody stopping by and watching, and all the YouTube folks. Uh, or if it's just me from the future looking back and seeing at all the cool 
elite dangerous things uh, that I did, you know, on my first excursion out. Um, thanks all. See you all next time. Good day, everybody.